come to the floor this evening to talk about our national debt, and I'll be introducing a resolution here in a moment. Uh, our national debt, to put it in perspective, had never been much before the year 2000. Cumulatively, it was $5 trillion. That's a lot of zeros behind a five. That is a lot, but that's what it took from the beginning of the country. Most of it did occur from the 60s to 1980. It's uh, when we started doing deficits, but it really started to get to where they became entrenched in standard operating procedure in the year 2000. We did put two wars on the credit card. That took our debt in 2000 to uh, 2008. We went up to $10 trillion. All of a sudden, a lot more zeros with an extra zero and a one. And then from 2008 to 2016, we went from $10 trillion to $16 trillion. Now it gets to be a little more repetitive. I got here elected in 18. Uh, by 18, we're adding a trillion dollars a year. Stick with me here. That's 16 trillion, 17, 18. So get here as a senator, alarmed by that when you come from a place like Indiana. You ran a business for 37 years. And if you even did anything close to that, I guarantee you your line of credit wasn't going to get renewed. Since then, and we had a pandemic in there, it has gotten to where we put a burden on future generations that I never imagined. I didn't think we'd see it in this short a period. Well, we did roughly put $4 trillion more on the books through the worst pandemic we ever had. Uh, I think many of us questioned whether that was necessary or not. Probably could have done better, but we had already gone into the routine of maybe erring on the side of doing more rather than less. Well, since then, we have gone into enterprising through government that when we were borrowing just a few years ago, a trillion dollars annually, now we're doing it every six months. And if you're good at math out there, try taking interest rates, which now are around five, six, seven percent, depending on how the government's borrowing it, start applying that to 34 or five trillion, and the only blueprint we've got for us would be from the Biden administration that puts us $52 trillion in debt in 10 years. That is a burden on our kids and grandkids. They'll have to figure out how to pay it off. All of us here seem to be uh, unconcerned about it. And I think it'd be a little different if we were knocking things out of the park. So those numbers never go away. Sooner or later, interest is going to, well, it's going to be sooner. Here, I think next year, we're going to spend as much on our entire defense industry and budget as we will on interest. And it doesn't take long to where that's going to amount to three to four years, five, what we spend on all discretionary spending here, domestic and defense. The government has grown from never being more than 20 percent of our GDP to now the new baseline is 25 percent of our GDP. Our economy has only grown maybe a couple percent a year. That is digging a hole deeper and deeper than anyone that is in the category of being kids and grandkids out there look out. It's not going to be easy to get back to where you're actually paying your bills as you accumulate them. And if we don't, it'll be the same thing Greece, Italy, Portugal, Spain had to go through when they fell off the wagon as small economies. We're the largest economy in the world. There's no good ending to it. So it's no more difficult than just not spending more than we take in. Any good manager 
would figure out real quickly how to get back in line. Your banker would never allow you to renew a line of credit if you didn't. Here we have the printing press in the basement and the credit card gets renewed each year. That's no excuse that you should keep performing poorly when you know what the end result is going to be. It's even a threat to our national security. For instance, we spend $850 billion roughly on defense. China, our main geopolitical foe, spends less than a third of that. Russia, who causes all that trouble around the world, spends about $90 billion. It begs the question, why can't we do better when we're spending all that money? It's because we don't have any of the safeguards. We're not running it like the business bus biggest business in the world. We're running it like kids with their hands in the cookie jar. And that's not a good business plan. It's unsustainable. I'm not going to repeat the numbers, but if you take this out 10 years, that is going to be a mountain that is so high to climb, so hard to tear down, that it'll be tough to do. And we could do it easily by just not digging the hole any deeper, meaning freezing our spending, allocating our resources better, just like all states do. We choose not to do it. We need to start. I'm on the Budget Committee. We haven't done a budget in the federal government that we've adhered to in over two decades. So finally, we are going to have to start knuckling down and having discipline like everyone else does, or it'll end up like a Chapter 11 does in the real world when you've not paid attention to the details, you borrow too much money, and you got a couple years to work it out with your creditors. So hopefully we will never get to that. I'm uh, introducing uh, this resolution called the Recognizing the National Debt as a Threat to National Security. As if in legislative session and notwithstanding rule 22, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the consideration of Senate Resolution 600, which is at the desk. The clerk will report. Senate Resolution 600, recognizing the national debt.